Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of the tutorials on how to run R codes using your browser. For this tutorial, we are going to use this platform called Cookup. And this is the page. I am going to leave the link to this page in the description box, so please use that tool to visit this page. Cookup allows you to do data science projects in groups and also as an individual. It has a number of tools and programming environments to help you get your data science projects up and then running. In order for you to use Cookup, you need to first sign up to create an account and then you can now sign in and then explore uh, the features. So with Cookup, you can have a free account or you can also have some paid services um, which gives you access to um, extra features that you wouldn't have been able to access if you were to use the free accounts. So that is how the Cookup um, platform is. There's also this option of using Cookup without having to create an account. And so we are going to explore all these um, um, options here. So let's start by looking at the Cookup platform using um, an anonymous account. So here on this page, when you scroll down, you see this button called Try Cookup Now. Just follow my cursor here and you see that button just at the bottom of the page. So let's click on that and then you'll be sent to another page here and there's this button called use Coca anonymously. So click on that as well. After clicking, you'll be sent to this page here. Coca organizes your activities or files into what we call projects. And so projects will contain files and these are files that will have um, different kernels running on them. So the kernels are what the programming environments that um, you will be using to get your stuff um, running. So when you are using the anonymous accounts, you get access to just one project and this is the project here. So um, following my cursor here, you will see that there is this tab here called project. So just click on it. And then you'll be sent to another page which shows you the list of projects you have. I am using an anonymous account and so I have access to just one project. I am unable to create additional ones which um, if you were to be given access, you have that button here to create but it's not there. So we just use just this project here. So let's go back to our project which is called the Welcome Cooker. So you can click here. Or if you are still on the project page, you can just click on the project name. So I earlier said files are organized um, into projects. Okay, so for each project, if you want to run some stuff, so you need to create a file and then specify the kind of what is the programming environment and then use that to perform your tasks. So by default, if you are using the anonymous account, a file is created for you. And it is also called welcome to cookup.ipy and that's a Jupyter notebook. So this is it. So this is why we are going to use the R um, platform. So on this page, since we have the file created, what we need to do is to select the kernel, which is the programming environment. So in this case, we are going to use R. And this is it. So just on that page, you see R here, R system wise. So click on it. And then you now have your R environments running. We are going to look at um, creating files later on. So just use this particular one here. So here you can start typing your R codes. Let's say print. Let me enlarge it. Let's say print. Hello world. And then just run it here. Use the button here and then run it so it will run the code for you let's say a equals two we are signing this let's say print a let's run it yeah let's say print a plus five you run it and it's also working fine so this is just an example of how you can run your r codes 
Now, what we've done was to use the default file, but then how do we create our own files? So that's what we are going to do next. So on this same page here, when you come here, file, this will give you options, okay, for creating files. You can also rename files. So let's even start by renaming this particular file here, the welcome to coca.ipy.md. And please also take note of the extensions. The file extensions are used to determine which kernels should be run. So pay attention to that. Let's rename this. So come to file here. Click on rename. And then here you can rename. Here, let's leave the extension. Let's come to this side here. Let's name it as R1. So after renaming, you can now click on that file and then run it, open it. And it will be loaded for you. So here you can still come back and then add some extra codes. I mean, it's up to you. Let's say two. Let me make it 10 rather. Yeah. Let's say print B. Run it. And it's done. So that's how we do it. So here we just renamed it. Let's look at creating a new file. So come to file new and then we just create it here again pay attention to the file extension and the file type so uh, these are the file types you can you can have a jupyter notebook linux terminal sage latex linux graphica desktop let's say r2 let's click it i think the first one we name it as what r1 here let's use r2 and then click Jupyter Notebook. Yes, yeah, so now it's running. So it's fine. Okay, so when we have the Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Notebook itself will not let you run R straight away. Okay, so Notebook allows you to run other programming environments. Okay, so you just have to select the one you want. In this case, we are using R. So if you select Jupyter Notebook, then the previous kernel you use will be displayed for you, which is R in our case. But you can also scroll down and then you see all the suggested kernels here. So Python, Julia, and others. So let's use R. So you can use this one here, or you can also click this one here. They all work fine. Let's use this one. So R, and then you can now start typing. Let's see, Prince. Welcome to Coca. And then just run it okay so now it's done so that's how we, we 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 run R okay now let's look at another stuff here so aside from using the Jupyter notebook which is interactive in our case here if it's false you can just come back here and then just close and even download we'll look at all those things later let's look at another one let's create another file this time there's something else I want to show you. So come to file, new. Okay, yeah, so here, aside the Jupyter node, you can also have what.r. So that one is more like a source code. So let's say r3. Okay, so if you want the source code, then you can just come to more file types here. So the r, source code will be what the r scripts that will have the extension of dot r so you come to more file types here and then you scroll down using this button here here this button here you just click on it and then just search for r so once you scroll down you see dot r here so click on it and then you have it created for you so this is a source code so you can just be typing your codes okay so that's the code you have source code terminal time travel but we are just going to explore just a few of them here the rest you can just take your time and explore and then get the stuff you want done so let's type print hello world okay 
Yeah, so here we have our code. So let's just look at another one. So aside the source code itself, we can just come here and use the shell. Okay, so the shell will give you an interactive session for R. So you click on the shell here and then you have your R interactive session also enabled for you where you can just type or you can just paste whatever you want to do. Let's say one plus one, two. Okay, yeah. And it's your what it will just um and do the stuff for you. So that's how we do it with the with the R shell as well. So you have your source code here, you also have your um your interactive session here. So I think uh, you can explore how you can run this source codes um, here as so, well. But these are things just trying and just um, get the stuff you want. That I mean, it's it's there for you to explore. Now let's go back. So this file. So we've created three files. So notice we have R one, R two, R three. These are the files that we have created. Okay, let's look at it. Now let's close them. You can close the files here if you want to. You can also close your shell here and then get your source code here. So you can also close that if you want to. You can also close the files here if you want to. Okay, so just explore. That's all that I will say. There's a lot you can do here. So it's up to um, your imagination. Just try and then just explore. Now, there are times where you may have accidentally closed the tab that has this session here okay so far as you have not closed your browser coca still saves your session okay so let's look at this situation here let's close this tab here still on the same browser let's say you go to the home page for coca and then you can still see that you are signing as what an anonymous user okay because your session has still been saved it will be safe for some time. So if you have this situation, just scroll down and then come to view Coca projects here. So click on it. And then you'll be sent to your project page. So you have the list of projects here. And then you can just click on it here. And then you'll see the list of files you have created. That is if you have created some files and they exist. Okay, so that's how it is. So here you can just download. Let's say you want to download. You can just check those you are interested in and download here. You can also upload here. Okay, if you also want to create a new file, you can also do that using this one here, new. You click on it and then you can create your files here. So let's say R4. This time, let's use Victor Notebook. You can also type in the extension here and then it will create it for you. It will use the extension to and determine what to do next. Let's say IPyNB. So you create this file here. Since it's a Jupyter Notebook, you'll be asked to select a kernel here. So you can use the R here and you have access to your R page so print one plus two and then it runs it for you so these are things um, that are uh, possible using the kokak platform so far what we've done was to use the anonymous accounts so the disadvantage of using this um, way of logging in is that your sessions are lost your work is lost if you close your browser okay so to avoid this you need to create an account which has been verified and validated and then you can now use that account to run coca so if you do that your work is saved and you can always log in to check so let's look at this situation where we have an account that we have created like this one i have an account i have signed in okay so this is it so if i have signed in then all that I have to do is to go to the home page here and then just go to view Kokak projects. So 
here if you don't have any projects you can create okay notice here because we are not using anonymous accounts we have this button here available so let's create a project so click on it let's say our project one you can just use any name so let's create it and then after creating the project you also need to start the project so you click on start and then the project will be started for you please take note of this writing here with this red background so it's telling you that you are using a free account okay so you will not have access to all the features maybe in terms of speed and in terms of you you able to um, install packages these are things that uh, you may not have access to or you may also not be able to clone um, from github and download data sets okay so these are things if you want to get access to you need to um, subscribe to the paid um, service or the paid version so that one is up to you but you'll be fine if you are doing some basic tasks just use the free account so since our project has been started you can just create or upload files using this button here so you click on this one here but you can also use this new here so create a file and then we are back to this page and then you can now select what you want to do okay so let's say r1 because a new project you can still have r1 maybe jupiter or whatever or just any stars or just r here so let's say jupiter after that it is open for you and you select your system wide r just as we did previously and then from there it's up to you to just enter your code so i mean with kokak we are able to do a lot it's a cool platform and i'll encourage all of you to try and then use them to get your r codes running for you without having to install r locally so if you are learning r if you're a beginner and you're even struggling to set up r then don't worry you can just use the online platform here to start learning r so that will be all for this tutorial let me also get your comments and then let's discuss and see how it goes so thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next session goodbye